Hello and welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Michael Ayala. It is time now for today's Talk Back segment. Each day we post a question on Court TV's social media pages. We gather your comments and questions and then respond right here on the show. The trial of former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter continued today. The prosecution has said throughout the week that even the use of a taser was an excessive use of force. So we asked our viewers if they agree with the state or not. Does the fact that Dante Wright tried to flee justifies the officer's use of a taser? Because that was her original choice. She ended up pulling the gun, but she was escalating the situation by pulling a taser. Still with me is trial attorney and family law attorney Holly Davis. All right, Holly, let's get to our first comment of the day, and it comes from Valerie Wilson. Valerie says, yes and no, simply because he was attempting to flee, they could have let him go, they had his info, so he could have been picked up at another time. Now, because they told him he was under arrest, so when he decided to flee, a taser could have been used, but using lethal force wasn't necessary. And I'll tell you what, Holly, just going there by what Valerie said, that's kind of, I think, what the defense wants. That comes, that leads to a not guilty verdict, don't you think? Yeah, I think that it does. Um, you know, really the interesting part for me here is that um, I think that officer created jeopardy. I mean, like, are we are we responding appropriately to the to the danger at hand? And in this case, uh, in this case, you've got the guy's address, you've got his license plate. You know, wait 45 minutes, wait an hour, wait two days, pick him up, and add an evading arrest charge to it. So I, I'm really against. I, I don't see hear how the situation justified the taser, but I can see how other people might disagree with that. Yeah, and I think that policy, that's one of the policy changes we're seeing across the nation, saying that you don't have to go out and use deadly force against somebody who's fleeing unless there are certain circumstances in place. This one wouldn't have met the current circumstances. Our next comment comes from Susan Zarenko. Susan says, yes, absolutely justifies to use the taser. Getting away endangers everyone. Did I hear correctly? His license was also suspended, and he had no proof of insurance, expired registration. They smelled weed in the car, and he had a warrant. Yeah, there was a lot wrong with him. We're not saying Dante Wright was in the right for any of the things that he did or any of the things he did in the past. But at the end of the day, if I can explain it to, to that particular viewer, um, the fact that he decided to flee, the question is, if you're going to raise and escalate a situation to a, uh, something that could be considered deadly force or even raise it, what was the justification for it? And I think we both, Holly, feel perhaps there wasn't that justification, which then would play into what the state is arguing. Yeah, and how much of that deadly force or the fear of being, you know, um, killed by Dante Wright that Kim Potter must have felt was created by herself? I mean, after the fact, Officer Lucky said that um, he was on the other side of the car in the window, and the fact that Dante Wright was getting into the car could have injured him. But again, Officer Lucky put himself into that vehicle and then used that as justification for the deadly force. I don't think Potter's going to succeed in that defense either. And so really, I think that that viewer, anyone who thinks that if you evade arrest, smoke pot, or did something wrong, or maybe didn't pay your last traffic ticket, justifies a taser, we really are misunderstanding how dangerous tasers are and how they lead to deadly force. And again, it's not proportionate to the situation at hand. And I believe there are tens of thousands of officer training manuals and policies and procedures within the law enforcement practice that bear that out. So I think we've got a disconnect in members of society thinking that we're a police state. Like, if you don't follow police's instructions, you could get murdered and that's okay. But that's not the police state we live in. We have a democracy and we have a system of government and we have police officers that follow the law. And de deadly force is supposed to be a last resort. We all should have learned that in the George Floyd case. We all tuned in. So deadly force is a last resort. Not the first thing you do when someone's not complying with your request. Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, you know, again, you can say, talk about what Dante Wright did, but it doesn't justify it immediately. There has to be a lot of other things going on. Not sure if they were there. And of course, the use of the, the, use of the taser, the state's going to argue as well, created a dangerous circumstance. And as we saw, he ended up crashing into someone. A similar thing could have happened if he was tased. Our next comment comes from Linda Wilburn. Linda says, no, never. Unless a person has a weapon, they can attempt to flee. At that point, it's up to the officer to run or drive to catch the person and put them in cuffs without getting shot for fleeing while black. Okay, I mean, there it is. I mean, at the end of the day, there are other options there for the police officer. We're clearly asking a lot of them in those moments. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's what it comes down to, right, Al? It's what you signed up to do. It's what you're charged with knowing. It's the reason why you have to comply with all of those um, education 
seminars and training procedures as a cop. It's the reason why you put your uniform on. You've got to protect the citizens. That means not murdering the innocent ones. Absolutely. And we're going to hear a lot of testimony about what the actual procedures are. All right. Thank you.